Since the beginning of civilization, humanity has wondered whether we are alone in the universe. Until the last years of the 19th century, people began to take steps to explore the outside world. However, the discovery was only limited to the moon. In fact, lunar landings ceased just three years after they began, and no one has set foot on the moon since then. Thankfully, that could soon change with the latest beast from Elon Musk, the Starship, the largest and most powerful rocket ever built. It has been designed to potentially take humans back to the moon and Mars and even turn humans into a multi-planetary species, a promise that no other spacecraft is capable of making. However, getting off the ground is not an easy thing as SpaceX needs to deal with the FAA. But doesn't the FAA know that the Starship is more important than it thinks? Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. It's been the dream of many a space advocate for decades. Reusable rockets and spacecraft that could provide safe, routine, frequent, and affordable access to space. Vehicles that could launch into space, return to Earth, and fly again with minimal refurbishment. You can imagine if planes were not reusable, very people would fly. A 747 is about $300 million. You'd need two of them for a round trip, Elon Musk once said. Yet I don't think anyone here has paid half a billion dollars to fly. The reason is that those planes can be used tens of thousands of times. In short, spacecraft and boosters with airplane-like operations would open up space to a broad range of activities and individuals. SpaceX says the 120-meter-tall spacecraft will be able to transport a payload of 200 metric tons, the greatest volume of any existing launcher. And unlike other orbital launch systems, Starship would be fully reused usable, and Musk has said that this could lower launch costs to about $2 million a launch. Launching a large telescope into space can cost over $100 million, but when placed on the Starship, that price would be reduced by two orders of magnitude, having a significant impact on space observation. With Starship's capabilities, it could potentially provide a more cost-effective way to conduct continuous climate observations of Earth and other planets, with a maximum mission cost of $350 million. If your launch vehicle consumes $60 million out of the $350 million or more, you've reached a significant resource limit for your actual mission. If Starship can reduce the launch cost, there will be more resources available for the primary scientific mission. Astronomers are also hopeful that at least one next-generation telescope proposed by NASA has been carefully considered by SpaceX for a potential Starship launch in the future. Starship could also benefit the state of suborbital and orbital science indirectly by bringing space debris back down to Earth. Space junk presents hazards to launch vehicles and operational orbiters. Any solution to reduce crowding in the skies would be tremendously important. Such a cleanup mission could even see Starship recovering dead satellites in SpaceX's Starlink system as they grow in number. The potential of Starship becomes even more optimistic as Musk shares status updates along with photos of the rocket. The founder and CEO of SpaceX once again stated in his last tweet that it's the gateway to Mars, as he shared a post from his company with stunning images of the fully stacked Starship. According to SpaceX's official account on the X platform, it has stated, Starship represents a fully reusable transportation system designed to carry both crew and cargo to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and beyond. They believe that the Starship will play a crucial role in enabling human colonization on Mars, which has been one of Musk's long-standing goals. Why are we doing this, Musk said at the company's February 2022 Starship Progress Update. I think this is an incredibly important thing for the future of life itself. There's always some chance that something could go wrong on Earth. Dinosaurs are not around anymore. Indeed, this is something that could truly happen. During a 2017 speech at the Starmus Science and Arts Festival in Norway, Stephen Hawking declared, We are running out of space, and the only places to go are to other worlds. 
it is time to explore other solar systems. Spreading out may be the only thing that saves us from ourselves. I am convinced that humans need to leave Earth. Hawking gave us a 600-year deadline. In roughly half a billion years, our sun will become a red giant. Its core will shrink and its outer layer will expand, consuming Mercury, Venus, and Earth. If Homo sapiens are still around, we'd have to be off the planet. And while we are not about to run out of materials anytime soon, resources aren't infinite. If we survive long enough, eventually we will have to expand beyond Earth. As the planets come into alignment, an event that happens once every 26 months, they would depart en masse, carrying thousands of people towards the Red Planet. Even if that comes to pass, colonizing Mars is an ambitious goal one bound to consume vast resources. And that is where Starship could take its first steps towards. But until it does, Starship will need to earn its keep in other ways. Indeed, some uses are already becoming clear. NASA intends to use it as a landing vehicle on the moon. In 2021, they contracted SpaceX to send Starship to the moon, thus demonstrating it can ferry astronauts to the lunar surface. Should all go well, Starship will play a key role in the American return to the moon later later this decade. Starship has also drawn the interest of private parties, most notable of which is Jared Isaacman, an American billionaire who last year purchased the first crewed flight aboard Starship. Though a date or even a year for the mission is yet to be confirmed, Isaacman looks serious in his ambition. More spectacularly, if a little unexpectedly, is the Dear Moon project by Japanese entrepreneur Yusaku Meizawa to fly a crew of musicians and artists around the moon. And honestly, with the unique capabilities and future missions of the Starship, it has the potential to render every other launch vehicle in the world obsolete. This could establish SpaceX as the dominant force in space and give the United States a significant advantage in escalating competition with China for supremacy in the realm of space exploration. All of this is why giving Starship the permission to perform launches is extremely crucial. And not just a few launches either. It needs many launches, especially now, at this current time, as everything is ready and it should be launched as soon as possible. However, the timeline for Starship will all depend on the FAA's approval. After completing the corrective actions, SpaceX must obtain a modified license from the FAA that addresses all safety, environmental, and other regulatory requirements. As part of that license application determination process, the FAA will now review new environmental information, including changes related to the launch pad, as well as other proposed vehicle and flight modifications. The FAA will complete a written re-evaluation of the 2022 programmatic environmental assessment, evaluating the new environmental information, including Endangered Species Act consultation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, stated the FAA SpaceX Boca Chica project team. If the FAA determines that the contents of the PEA are no longer valid due to the proposed changes for Flight 2, an additional environmental review will be required. Accordingly, the FAA has not authorized SpaceX's proposed Flight 2, confirmed the FAA SpaceX Boca Chica project team. The FAA will continue to provide updates on any license determinations or results in terms of additional environmental reviews through notifications, it says. When it was approving Starship's first launch, the FAA relied on a PEA which is considered less stringent than an EIS, and that was a factor favorable to SpaceX. The PEA is a program required by the National Environmental Policy Act of 1969 that sets policies for launches into the sky. The draft PEA analyzes potential environmental impacts that may result from the construction and operation of proposed new facilities as well as alternative solutions. The PEA will create efficiencies by establishing a tiering framework where appropriate for project-specific actions that require additional analysis. As decisions on specific project sites are made to the extent additional NEPA analysis is required, environmental reviews would be conducted to supplement the analysis set forth in this PEA. In general, SpaceX will still have to go through each step with the FAA to launch Starship as soon as possible, and the FAA is demonstrating that they are conducting thorough assessments so that when approval is granted, no one could say, you didn't check this or that? This statement serves as an explanation of the 
FAA's working process with SpaceX in response to environmental groups and the public. The final approval from the FAA could still be two to three weeks away, so mark that on your calendars. Otherwise, that's it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Your feedback is very important to us because it helps us make better videos for you. So for that, we thank you so much and we hope to see you again next time. 